everyone. I'm Sula of Sula's Big Adventures, and this is chapter eight of my multi-part series, Sula's Complete Video Guide to Becoming an Amateur Astronomer. Chapter eight, setting up and using your new telescope. Well, I hope you found chapter seven useful and that you found a telescope that fit in your budget and meets your needs. Now let's talk about setting it up and using it. I'm going to be talking about setting up a Dobsonian and setting up and using a reflector or refractor on an equatorial mount. You know, when you receive your first telescope or indeed any telescope, it's an exciting event and your urge is to go out and use it right away. But it's best if you unpackage it during the daytime, make sure you received all the parts and also assemble it in the daytime rather than fumble around in the dark because you want your first light experience to be a good one. So let's get started. If you bought a Dobsonian telescope, well, all you really need to do is to assemble the daisy wheel base, put the tube in the cradle. You'll need to check it to make sure it was collimated properly at the factory, and if it wasn't, you'll need to collimate it. Actually, this video is getting to be too long, so I will refer you to this other video that will tell you how to collimate your Dobsonian and how to get the best use out of your Dobsonian telescope. Line up your finder scope with your telescope's eyepiece, and I'll also show you how to do that, and then you're ready to go stargazing. But if you've got an equatorial mount, well, you have quite a few other steps before you can get started. Now let's put the mount head on the mount. So it already came with the tripod legs put together. All you have to do is screw the accessory tray onto these bars with the wing nuts coming up through the bottom. There are three of them. Then you take the mount head, you loosen these two bolts, which are the azimuth bolts, to make room for the center bolt. And then you just put it on there with this slot where this peg is. And then you tighten it. Sorry, this is the declination. Slow motion control. You screw it in here. And this is right ascension. And it can go on this side or this side, whichever is more convenient for you. And it's all ready, except we need to set the latitude on the latitude scale to your latitude. And you can find that from the compass on your phone your compass will tell you your latitude. It came from the factory set at 37 degrees because it came from Watsonville, California, and I'm at 37, so mine's already set. But you use these two metal bolts here to set it to your latitude, which you get from the compass on your phone. Then just get it as close as you can. Before you can use your polar scope, you need to go out during the day and you have to calibrate the reticule. The reticule is the little diagram inside of your polar scope. If your mount came with a polar scope, this mount came with a polar scope installed. And it has a picture of the Big Dipper and Cassiopeia, but some of them come with two circles. The larger circle is for the Southern Hemisphere and the smaller circle is for the Northern Hemisphere. And the circles have tick marks on them and Polaris has to be placed on one of those tick marks. But before you do that, you go out during the day and you look through your polar scope at a distant object and you put that object dead in the center of your polar scope. And then you loosen the right ascension clutch and let it go 180 degrees east and then make sure it's still dead center and then let it go 180 degrees west and then you look through the polar scope and if that object is no longer dead center then you have to calibrate by taking a 1.5 millimeter hex wrench and putting it in these little holes where the polar scope goes into the mount and turning it a small amount, one at a time, and then going back 
You only want it to move halfway between the center and where it ended up when you turned it. And you look again, and if it's still not centered, then you turn one of the other screws. It has three holes for the 1.5 millimeter hex wrench. <coughs> and you keep doing that, making small turns because you don't want to break your reticule. And you look through and you turn it back 180 degrees. And then if it's dead center, you've calibrated your reticule and you never have to do it again. But always protect your polar scope because you don't want it to go out of calibration. You should only have to do that one time for the life of the telescope. Then put it back straight up and down and lock right ascension. Now your polar scope reticule is calibrated and you're ready to polar line. Next, you're gonna point the mount to true north using your compass. This one, here's the polar scope right here, so that needs to be pointed to true north. Put your compass in front, but not near the metal, and when it's pointed to north, turn your polar scope until your polar scope is pointed north. And then, it should be approximately in there then. Another thing you can do if you're not sure where Polaris is, and Polaris is the closest star to the North Celestial Pole in the Northern Hemisphere, is you can open an app if you have it on your phone and hold it up to the sky. And when it says Polaris, put it in front of the polar scope. And then you should be approximately pointed in the correct place. If you polar align when it's dusk and you have this pointed at true north, Polaris will be the only bright star in that area and that will help you a lot to polar align. Now hopefully when it gets dark enough, you crouch down and you look through this polar scope and inside here is a reticule. I use PS Align. And it has a picture of a reticule, just like you see when you look through your polar scope. And it'll tell you where to put Polaris on this reticule. If you look through the polar scope and you can't see Polaris, then you probably didn't line it up. And you'll have to look outside of it and scoot the tripod legs over. But hopefully you see it somewhere in there. And the reticule has tick marks on it. And often, 12 will not be at the top. I have yet to see one of these that has 12 at the top, but just have one of them at the top. So you do that earlier before you get out there to go stargazing. You find a telephone pole or a building or something in the house and you look through the polar scope and you make sure that the one of the tick marks is straight up and down don't want it tilted one way or the other. It needs to be straight up and down. And then after you've done that and you know where this needs to go to make it straight up and down, I've marked it with a little white magic marker. It needs to go tilted a little bit because it's not straight up and down. And then lock this knob, which is the right ascension knob. And then you're going to turn these azimuth knobs, which are these two knobs right here, and that will make it move left to right, or the altitude knob, make it up and down until you have it where this app says to put it on the reticule. This mount, when you turn it on, the hand controller will tell you the pole star position, but this mount has a defect in it and that pole star position on the hand controller is not correct. And I don't go by it. I go by my app PS Align because I think it's more accurate. But if you don't trust your app or your mount's hand controller, 
there is another way to polar align, and that is that you crouch down behind your polar scope, and you're not going to be able to get both of them in there, but you look outside of it till you see the other bright star and the little dipper, co-cab, and wherever co-cab is, you turn your reticule till one of your tick marks points to co-cab, and that's where you put Polaris on the railroad track, in the same direction as co-cab. And it has an N on it to show you that that tripod leg needs to be pointed at True North. So let's get the compass and point it to True North. And we're going to do that before we put the counterweights on or the telescope because this particular mount came with a polar scope that has an image of the Big Dipper and Cassiopeia. And you have to look up in the sky and see where they're located. This time of year, the Big Dipper will be high in the sky and Cassiopeia will be at the horizon. So you look through the polar scope after taking off the caps and you match it up to where they are in the sky. Polar line in that way means you loosen the RA axis and you may have to even turn it upside down to get Polaris in the proper position depending on what time of year it is. You may even have to take off this slow motion control. So once we've got Polaris in the correct position, then we can lock down the RA axis and using only the azimuth knobs and the latitude or altitude knobs, you get Polaris on the dot in your polar scope. And that's how you polar align this mount. In addition to polar aligning, you have to balance your telescope. So you unloosen the right ascension clutch and then you put it 180 degrees and make sure that both sides are equal weight. This appears to be balanced although it, it doesn't move very smoothly. Well, it looks balanced to me, but if it's not, you just move these weights up and down on this shaft until neither end sinks. And once it's balanced, then you have to balance it, put it back in the home position and lock the right ascension clutch, and then unlock the declination clutch and balance it in declination. And you do that by turning the telescope 180 degrees and making sure that neither end weighs more than the other. If it does, you slide this dovetail bar back and forth in the saddle until both ends of the telescope weigh the same. And when it does, then you lock the declination clutch and then it's balanced. After you've calibrated the reticule, you've polar aligned, you've got Polaris in the proper position, You've balanced your telescope. You want to look through it and make sure that Polaris is visible through the telescope's eyepiece and the finder scope. If you bought a package that came with a finder scope, it may have been a very cheap finder scope. If it was under six by 30, I'd throw it in the trash and replace it. I use nine by 50, but you should at least have six by 30. And another thing you might consider is to replace it with a red dot finder. A red dot finder does not magnify the view, but it shows you where you're looking in the sky and puts a red dot to where your telescope is pointed. The view that you see through a telescope's eyepiece in a reflector telescope and a straight through finder scope will be inverted. The view you see through a refractor, like this telescope, and a catadioptric telescope with a star diagonal, which is this piece, will be a mirror image. So the image you see through your finder scope may not be the same as the one you see through your telescope, depending on which kind you have. 
some are correct image and that is the same as what you see through your eye or a pair of binoculars but you put that on your finder scope dovetail base and then you're going to find an object during the day or at night you can find a star and you look at the star through the telescope and get it dead center and to do that it's best to use an eyepiece that has crosshairs like this cheap Celestron and I mean cheap but it was the only one I could find and it's supposed to be illuminated but the illuminator no longer works but if you do it during twilight right after a star becomes visible you can still see the crosshairs but don't use it for visual use because it's a terrible eyepiece. You shouldn't scrimp on eyepieces. Anyway, different topic for accessories. Use a crosshair eyepiece, get an object centered, either a star or in the daytime a distant object. And once it's centered in the crosshairs, then you look through your finder scope. And if it's not centered, you turn these two screws here until it's dead in the center of the crosshairs. Make sure it's still in the center of the crosshairs of the eyepiece. Dead in the center of your finder scope. And then you're all set. Now that you've got those lined up, get rid of this terrible, cheap Celestron eyepiece and put a good quality eyepiece in. And when you're ready to get started, you polar aligned. You've got Polaris in there. You lock down your azimuth knobs your altitude knobs, you line this up, it's balanced. Now you're ready to find some objects. Start with your lowest magnification eyepiece, which is the one with the highest millimeters. This is 24, or you might have 26 or 32 millimeters. Start with that, because it's much easier to find things. And then look for it with your finder scope. And when you've got it in the finder scope, then center it through the telescope's eyepiece. Now, once you've polar aligned, do not touch these altitude or azimuth knobs and do not knock the tripod legs or you're going to have to polar align again. To find things in the sky, you just loosen the RA axis and the declination axis by loosening the clutches. And if you want to look at something behind you, then you turn it like this. Do not try to turn it by moving the tripod or those other knobs. You only turn it in RA and deck. That's how you look at something behind you, or if you want to look at something at the zenith, you move it like this. It'd be hard to see, you'll have to bend down. So you might want to adjust your leg, but you want to level your tripod before you start as well. And you'll have to use a carpenter's level if your tripod does not come with a bubble level. So always level your tripod. So that's how you find things. You move it in declination and right ascension only. And when you've got the object in the field of view of your eyepiece, then lock those clutches down and then only use your slow motion controls to keep it in the field of view. And then you can take out the 24 or your lowest magnification and go to a higher magnification. I've got an 11 millimeter, so this is 15. And then it's gonna to have to be refocused if you change your eyepiece. And it may not be centered because you have a much wider field of view with a lower magnification. And if your telescope came with a Barlow, usually those packages come with very cheap Barlows and you should probably just throw it in the trash. I bought this Barlow. This is an Orion Shorty two-time Barlow. And this is a good Barlow. Um, but only use a Barlow once you've got it dead centered. And so what you do is you take the eyepiece out and you put the Barlow in and then you put the eyepiece on top of the Barlow and the Barlow will make whatever the magnification is of the eyepiece two times more magnification. But use that sparingly. You're going to spend a lot of time finding things honestly. 
So if you look at this telescope mount closely, you'll see that these rings have all these numbers on it. And you're probably wondering what all these numbers are for and what you're supposed to do with them. So you can consult your owner's manual to see about that. So let's see what it says. Continuing with the prior example of observing in Las Vegas, you would rotate the date circle so that the first line to the left of the zero on the meridian offset scale lines up with the time meridian indicator mark. Make sure that the zero mark on the RA setting circle lines up with the pointed indicator cast into the mount and that the large thumb screw just above it is tightened. Now rotate the mount about the RA axis until the line on the RA setting circle that corresponds to your current local time lines up with the line on the date circle that indicates the current date. If you're on daylight saving time, subtract one hour. Okay, I have two degrees from a prestigious university and my IQ is about 135. But I don't know what the hell they're talking about, do you? <laughs> and secondly, Las Vegas? Who the hell can see the Big Dipper and Cassiopeia in Las Vegas? What a strange example. Fortunately, when you get to the end of your instruction manual, it comes with a two-page addendum which says, Your Polar Axis Finder Scope, describing the AstroView EQ Mount instruction manual, has been upgraded for your convenience. Please disregard pages 6 through 8 of the instruction manual as they are no longer applicable. Okay, that's good, but what are those numbers for? Well, what they're for is that you can actually use these setting circles to locate objects in the night sky by their RA and declination, which I explained in a previous video. However, it's very difficult to locate objects that way, and I don't recommend it. You can if you just want to torment yourself, but the easier way is to star hop by finding a bright star and then going from that bright star to something else that's easy to see until you get to the object that you would like to look at. Now that you're out there, you've polar aligned, you've balanced, you have leveled your tripod, you're all ready. Now what do you look at? Well, tonight is a waxing gibbous moon and the moon is a perfect object for a beginner and for a first light for your new telescope. So let's have a look at it later when the sun goes down. So you'll want to get started setting up your telescope well before sunset because it's gonna take you a while to put all the parts together to balance it and to get everything ready. And you want to be ready right at dusk because it's much easier to find Polaris uh, as soon as you can. And then get it in the reticule and then you'll be ready when it's totally dark to do some stargazing. So I hope you found this video on setting up and using your equatorially mounted telescope useful and that you're enjoying your journey to becoming an amateur astronomer. And if it's a cloudless night tonight, well, take your telescope out and enjoy the dark skies. And I hope there will always be dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.